and I welcome you all for this Mission 10x uh, presentation. For today we will be doing a continuation of course from yesterday and that is about learner centricity. Yesterday we talked about how in this new kind of an era where teacher is supposed to take care of the 21st century learner, first step towards that is to for the teacher to become a facilitator. In order to become a facilitator, many skills were identified yesterday. Today we will move forward in another step where we understand how to become learner centricity and in order to do that, we need to recognize and respect the kind of diversity of students that we have in our classroom. What is this diversity that we are looking at is something we will try to understand right now. This particular session is on multiple intelligence and this will create a pathway for learner centricity that is what we are aiming at. These are my session objectives for today. I want each one of you to read it by your own. And as we move along, probably each one of these will be, I am sure in some way or the other, clearer to you. I will give you roughly about one minute just to see what the session objectives are. I guess before lunch to talk about some theory is going to be a little challenge for me. So anticipating that this would be the situation, I have tried to work it out and maybe a small response which I would require from you to move forward. Like yesterday I request all coordinators to help me get just this one response for the next slide that I would be showing. And for that I request like yesterday the coordinators would type the answer for me. In the beginning I have this particular question to all the centers. Let me see also which is the center which gives me the first answer. I just want all of you to type your answers. Just one name of an Indian whom you think is the most intelligent person. I will give you about one minute to type your answers and I will take you forward from here. Name one Indian public figure who according to you is most intelligent. Yes, coordinators. Abdul Kalam, Abdul Kalam, okay. Can we have some more? Abdul Kalam, every human one, okay. Abdul Kalam, very nice. Anybody else, any other Indian? Interesting. Myself, PSG, very good. <laughs> okay, can I have some few more responses? I have still about 15 seconds. Narayan Murthy, okay. That is from Periyar. Okay. So taking it forward from here, this is very interesting. And we do see that most of us, I am taking this as the majority of the view. Okay. Aryabhatta again is a different from what we have seen. But majority of us do consider uh, our president, former president to be one of the most intelligent person. We have Narendra Modi. Of course, Ahmedabad, Narendra Modi. <laughs> Let's move on to understand why did I ask this question simply because I wanted to tap and understand what is it that is traditionally known as intelligent. And if I look at the common responses from what I've got from you, I do understand that intelligence is understood in the traditional sense of people who are good in math and science. However, there comes a man from Harvard University, Howard Gardner, presently working at Harvard University. And he says, well, this is not how it is supposed to be. Intelligence can be understood in many different ways. And look at us. What is it that he is saying? This is a brief biography about Howard Gardner. I don't know how many of us would have heard or known about him. He's a developmental psychologist from Harvard University and, of course, an American. Plenty of books and his most revered book and is where the multiple intelligence theory which we are going to talk about in some time surfaces in his most phenomenal book called Frames of Mind 1983. Subsequent to that many other books subsequently which is also very interesting book is Reframed Minds. He is a critique of the notion that there is one general intelligence that goes about in every person which is underlying all our tasks. He defies that particular idea and he advocates what is known as multiple intelligence. The whole idea of what intelligence is pluralized like we will see in this forthcoming session. I will take you through, through some pictures and some few lines 
to understand what does this multiple intelligence is all about. So having understood that multiple intelligence is the fact that each one of us has not just this one intelligence, but we have several kinds of intelligence and in varying degrees. Let us look at which of these are the ones. Traditionally understood there are two intelligences which are taken. One is linguistic intelligence. What does it mean? Let us understand that very quickly. A person who is linguistically intelligent will probably use the words very, very creatively and often uses the words to express oneself very eloquently. Many of us such as poets, authors, journalists and of course orators, these are people who are very free and comfortable in using language. Many of us are also amongst us I am sure could be one of this. Traditionally also understood and many of these IQ tests if you have ever gone online would be testing you on linguistic skills and of course the next one which I am talking about logical and mathematical intelligence. What is this? All engineers we take for granted are probably very high on mathematical and uh, logical intelligence. This is the ability to calculate, quantify, perform complex operations and you just saw Professor Kannan doing all that right now and I am sure many of us would say give him 100 on 100 for doing all that. But if I sit over here and do probably not. Let us also understand that these skills are also applied in understanding relationships between objects and ideas. Typically a scientist, mathematician, engineers and of course economists would probably qualify as logical, mathematically intelligent human beings. Traditionally however, other than linguistic and mathological intelligence, none of this what I am going to suggest to you now are included as part of being intelligent. However, Howard Gardner's research has told us that there is something more to intelligence than just linguistic and mathological. One of this is bodily kinesthetic intelligence. What does this mean? This is our ability to use our body in expressive ways and in rhythmic ways. Also the ability and timing and balancing of movements and coordinating it, especially during dance or during sports. And therefore you will also see that this is predominantly very visible in dancers, actors, sports persons and aerialists. Aerialists are people who, who, do the walk, uh, who do the rope walking. Many of us would possibly wonder sometimes how is it possible, but well they are highly kinesthetically intelligent. The fourth kind of intelligence which Gardner has pointed out is interpersonal intelligence. Many of us probably know everybody in our building that could be because we understand the other person very well comfortably, we are able to understand people's motives, their moods and probably accordingly we will manage our own dealings with such people. We are high on interpersonal if we are able to interact effectively not with just with our family and friends but in any form of any kind of a stranger as well. Typically the salesman that we keep avoiding, the marketing person, our leaders, these are all high on interpersonal intelligence. Intrapersonal intelligence. Who are these kind of individuals? Intrapersonally intelligent persons are those who are able to understand not others but themselves much more in depth than anything else. These are people who can be very clear about their strengths and weaknesses. They are able to reflect and regulate their own emotions and feelings. Daniel Goleman, if anybody of us who are uh, aware of emotional intelligence is one such kind of uh, a work which we probably could look at in terms of being intrapersonally intelligent, people who are able to understand, reflect and then regulate their feelings to the success of their profession and personal life. Typically philosophers and evangelists are those who are high on intrapersonal intelligence. Moving forward, we have visual or spatially intelligent human beings and these are typically those who are able to accurately perceive the spaces. People who can think in three dimensions who are more comfortable in looking at graphs, charts rather than looking at texts, words. 
these are typically your architects, your civil engineers, your interior designers and of course painters who are able to understand spaces much more differently than many of us could. Interesting, musical intelligence also is considered as one of the ways in which we could do certain tasks and also reflect our intelligence in doing that. Typically, somebody who is musically intelligent would show such skills in terms of able to see patterns in th sounds. They are able to understand and identify different kinds of music, if there is some problem with it, how different it is. They can see the rhythms, they can make rhymes, they can possibly even reproduce and create some of these using music and voice. Typically, of course, we would identify musician, composers and music critics. I have specially mentioned music critics over here because while I may not be able to sing and compose music, I may thoroughly be aware of what it means to create music and where the note is perfect, not perfect. So I need not be able to sing sometimes or compose in order to be musically intelligent. Why did I do all this? And what is my purpose in briefing you all in terms of this intelligences? As a teacher who would want to be learner centric and facilitate a process for the 21st century learner, it is very essential that you understand that you have such students in your class as well. Those who are high on interpersonal intelligence, those who are high on spatial intelligence, those who are high on linguistic intelligence, you will have a variety of this in your classrooms. Some who are very prominently in your classroom always wanting to do things, but there are those at the end of the spectrum who probably are intrapersonally smart and therefore maybe would not be wanting to come forward. How do you manage such a class? So if you have such students in your class, interestingly what you can do is identify them in your classroom and take forward. Hence, my slide as I've shown to you right now projecting three key points for the teacher to take note of while structuring, while giving opportunities and while strengthening the areas of their learners in the classroom. It is very interesting to note that if a teacher is aware of such diversity in his or her classroom, it is possible that the classroom can be more interactive, can be more creative and can evolve more learning than possibly what it is happening. From day yesterday to today morning to the just the previous class, you would have seen that our resource persons over here have engaged you in varieties of ways which have brought in all your elements or intelligences into play. For instance, Professor Patak who yesterday showed you pictures of the, the, the character Dumbo is possibly looking at intelligence of those who are high on visuals. For instance, also today morning when Professor Fatuk was mentioning about how certain projects are being done at IIT Bombay, wherein the teams are involved and creating groups and therefore completing the projects, we realize that this is highlighting interpersonal intelligences of some groups. It is very interesting, therefore you will see that many of the times if the teacher is aware that these are the different kind of intelligent students in the classroom, it is possible for teachers to take the entire spectrum and crowd of the class in order to have an interesting learning environment for her or his class. Having understood this, I will take a quiz. Like all typical teachers, I would be interested in knowing if my learners, even when they have been hungry and kept waiting, how much of what was said now could be possibly understood by them. Can I have a quick round of a quiz and I, I, I promise you it is going to be interesting. The first team who will give me the right answer will be announced over here from my side. So what I will do is, I have a screen in front of me and I request coordinators also. The moment they will see a particular picture on the screen, they will have to tell me what intelligence that is. Okay, are we all game? So we will start now and the first one who will give me their names will be flashed and I will announce the right answer from here. The right answer will also be visible on the screen as well. 
So let's take this quiz and all alert. Forget about food and let's start. It will just take about 4 minutes and your quiz starts now. Can I have the responses? Which intelligence is this? You may recognize one, you may not recognize the other. Okay. Can I have the answers? Which intelligence does this picture project? I have shown you the celebrities over here I want. Okay. I have the first one, interpersonal, interpersonal. Sihangad has got right and that is linguistic. But uh, I will take Government Engineering College Thrissur for giving full marks. They have got it right at the bank. It is linguistic. It is not interpersonal. It is linguistic because one picture is of Barack Obama who is a wonderful orator and Arundhati Roy whom we know as the best writer India has or rather I don't know she is being an Indian of course. So, so she is an Indian writer very well known. Barack Obama and Arundhati Roy. Good job Trisur. Let's go to the next quiz and let's be more quicker this time. Next one for you. Yes. Can you tell me what is this? Yes, can I have the answers? The first one, I want to see the first right answer. Okay, Nirma Ahmedabad, musical intelligence and everybody following that, PSG included. Wonderful and I think this was an easy quiz. So let me get a little more tougher now. Thank you. Let's move for the third picture and see. Good, you all are getting better. So this is A.R. Rahman, musical intelligence. You all are all right. Now let me see. Yes, which intelligence is this? I have two pictures put up for you. I am sure at least out of the two you would recognize one. Can I have some quick, wow, wonderful. Nirma, you have made it. I am the bad. It is body intelligence. Very good. Good. I like this competition. Very good. People are only typing body over here. <laughs> but I will give full marks to MGM Nanded for giving the right answer in terms of terminology. It is said kinesthetic and the rest others following as body intelligence. This is Bruce Lee, one of the most revered heroes in bodily intelligence and Malika Sarabhai for the dancer and the beauty with which she dances. Let's keep the competition going. Let's see the third one and I want you to crack this one equally. Let us see. What intelligence is this? Can I have it from the groups out there? Okay. Can we start? Which intelligence is this? Okay, I will take the first one. NIT Surat Kar, full marks. And then of course, uh, PSG, no. Okay, NIT Surat Kar, you get it first. It is visual intelligence. And this is MGM Engineering Nanded says it is intrapersonal. I am afraid it is not intrapersonal and Velour says it is logical, I am afraid it is not. This is none other than our famous RK Lakshman and he is one of the biggest cartoonists and as I mentioned I made the quiz a little difficult deliberately. These are people who can identify spaces and create that spaces in a small form and space. Here we have R.K. Lakshman, visually or spatially intelligent. That's good. Let's go forward and see. Come on, now tell me this one. And this time I will time you all. I need responses in 30 seconds. And if your time starts now, let me see who is the first one to do it for me. Which intelligence is this? Wonderful. I have Velour with intra, logical, intra. MGM has written philosopher, I will give it to them. Full marks to everybody, but I will take Velour for giving me the first, first response. And this is intrapersonal. Fantastic. I am amazed at your responses. Helen Keller on one side and we have Swami Vivekan high on intrapersonal people who know more about who they are. Fantastic. A small way to go and let us see this one if you can crack it. Let's watch you. Your time starts now and tell me which intelligence is this one. Yes, Vijay T I, Surat Kal. Okay, S I C S R Pune interpersonal and you get full marks and you are high on my list. 
So, S G S I T, okay, interperson, 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 full marks, and I think I will grant it. But for the first one, I will take Anna University, whose name is flashing first on my list over here. This is Mahatma Gandhi, and you would realize that yes, if he was not high on interperson, probably our freedom would be something we still struggling to get. Wonderful team. One last one and let me see if this one is a big crack. Your time starts now and let me see who gets it first for this one. Yes, if you can identify both of them are there. Your clue was there when we made the presentation. Can I have the responses please? Yes, NIT Surat Kal cracks it. It's logical. Sure? Let me see other responses as well. Fantastic. Logical and analytical. I don't know if all of you are going through the process of elimination that if she's finished all this, then maybe this is the last one remaining. I don't know if that is how you are working, but this is fantastic. This is, of course, Amartya Sen and Charles Babbage, high on logical and mathematical intelligence. I'm very glad with all your participation and from this, despite the delay, despite the hunger and the lunch break, you all got it all right and I'm so pleased with the fact that you all contributed so quickly and I think that this is what we are looking forward to that from a distance also we are being learner centric and we are providing opportunities for interaction. I hope with this particular picture quiz that we had it, I was targeting the visual intelligence of many of you and this is how I have done. A small requirement from our side is to take this a little forward in terms of intelligences that you all have. There are certain websites handed over to you in your home assignment. I would request all of you to go back and whenever you get the time, take at least one of these intelligence tests and get down to understanding what is your key intelligence area. Of course, you all are all Engineers here you all will be high on mathological, but other than mathological, what is your key strength in terms of kinesthetic, in terms of musical or whatever, please take this test and please be ready and we will take this forward tomorrow. I loved what you all did today and I was very pleased with your enthusiastic participation. I thank you all and I look forward to seeing what are your key strengths in your intelligences tomorrow and Mission 10X will take you forward in another round of interactive session from our side. Thank you for being a wonderful audience and see you soon. Thank you.